Today we're going to be talking to the number one trade analyst in India. That's Komal Nahta, and he is going to be doing some box office number crunching for us today. Hello and welcome, sir. Thank you. Starting off with the phenomenal numbers of Kerala Story, sir. Have you watched the film? Yes, I have watched the film. And what did you think about it? I loved it. I loved it. As soon as I was out of the theater. I was just trying to understand, and I said nothing can stop this film from becoming a super hit. You know, it's such a small film, but made with so much of honesty and integrity. Uh, they have not really bowed down to commercial compulsions. You know, try to fit in a song here or a romantic scene there. They have been true to the subject they have selected, and that is the film's biggest victory. It is very stark, very real, very honest. um of course there is a section of the audience which feels that it has done injustice i am not really concerned about that i'm talking purely from business point of view mm -hmm. i think from the point of view of film business mm -hmm. um the kerala story is a perfect example of an honest film and do you think that's why it's doing good business when i just talk about the entertainment i'm sure when you're talking about the honest film you're talking about the economics of entertainment right definitely that is why because see somewhere honesty in a film or the honesty of a filmmaker you can't hide it the camera never lies and the audience is very smart so they understood the first the audience understood very well that this is a very stark film it disturbs you it leaves you speechless and spellbound in many scenes and actually when you're getting up you really don't know how to react and what to say so i think that shock value is so tremendous that the film had to work with the audience it had to work at the box office and had to work in a very big way so i have to i have thought that there could be some external factors also helping the film success such as the fact that it's been made tax free um you know there's a large section of people who ideologically uh, support the film but you're saying apart from all these reasons which i thought could have contributed to the film success saying it's purely running on the basis of its content and its entertainment value yes based mainly on the content and entertainment value but what you say is right these external factors or extraneous factors as we would, we would say definitely have contributed there is a huge section of the audience in india which subscribes to the story of the film uh, it has got the governmental support uh, the controversy has only added to the excitement tax exemption doesn't really help too much because it's just that gst and that also the state portion so you know if it is it's just 50% of that gst portion which has been exempted but it this definitely has a psychological value on the audience because they feel are ye tax free hai matlab kuch acha hoga so that has made a lot of difference especially for a film with the message uh, a film of this kind tax exemption goes a long way in molding public opinion about whether they should be watching or not the film so sir so the collection standard about what do you think 35 crores three day collections i think it's more than 35 crore i don't have the exact figure but it's 36 crore or something like that which is phenomenal for a film that has been made on a budget of probably 5 crore i think 35 crore in the first weekend is a fantastic figure and it's only going to do very well it's not just a one week phenomenon i think it's going to continue doing well and it's going to be in the cinemas for at least 6 to 8 weeks probably 10 weeks also So I've seen so many memes on social media saying, you know, uh, Adha Sharma has defeated this superstar, or Adha Sharma has defeated uh, that one. What do you think about that? You know, the star power of the film. What do you think is the actual star power here at play? I think the actual star power is the Stark story and its authentic making. Sudip To Sen is the real star of the film. and vipul shah for backing such a project uh, of course adha sharma has done a fantastic job and i don't i think she has just played shalini alias fatima her name is changed after she's converted so i think she's just played the character beautifully every performance is worth applauding so tell me if this is something that even sudhir mishra had tweeted about right saying people who uh, criticize vivek agnihotri these are the not the people who go and support cinema of their ideology we had another recent release afwa which has been critically acclaimed lots of people who have watched it have praised it but it's not been able to draw people into the halls what what's the reason for that see there has to be a reason why a film doesn't do well 
the conditions are the same. It's not as if there was tension in the week of release of Afwa. It's not as if uh, uh, people were scared to go for Afwa. If at all, there was fear about the Kerala story because we've heard of incidents where people have been revolting against the film, uh, you know, uh, holding dharnas outside cinemas, threatening to do damage and vandalize cinemas. So if at all, this film should have been affected because of that reason. Uh, if Afwa is not doing well at the box office, there is something which has not struck a chord with the audience. It, uh, no doubt, it's a good film, well-made film, but maybe it's uh, too classy. It's just for one thin section of the audience and therefore it's not getting the numbers. All right. So what about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume D that also had a clash with the Kerala story last weekend? And surprisingly, it was a Kerala story that got at the box office. I'm saying surprisingly, because many would think it's an Indian film that will win. But when you see these big Marvel films and they come to India, they decimate everything in their way. But that's not been the case with Guardians of the Galaxy this time. Two reasons. The Kerala story, its opposition was huge for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And secondly, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 has not been loved like other Marvel films, you know. So even if the Kerala story was not releasing or had not released simultaneously, uh, probably the Guardians of the Galaxy would have done a shade better. But I don't think it would have turned out to be a hit because it's not as if people are loving that film. No, they're liking it. That's about it. So, so can I say that this is perhaps a sign that people are you know, starting at bored with Marvel or I can't extrapolate that with just this film? No, I don't think that needs extrapolation of this kind because this particular uh, film has not really lived up to the expectations. Maybe people expected more, but you never know. Uh, another film of Marvel will do wonders, will do marvelous business. <laughs> okay, so they, can, they can never underestimate them. So also another film which we thought is going to be ruling the box office has been postponed, a film talking about Java. And there were was, was so many calculations made that with June 2nd, everyone had given it a wide berth for release. They thought they were safe after Patan. What's the story with that? You know, they were, they were racing against time. There were already rumours that the film might not meet its release date of 2nd June. But one never expected that it would be postponed by three months, you know. Um, I think they were not ready. The visual effects, computer graphics are taking too long. And Shah Rukh Khan was actually racing against time. Atli Brar, the director, Shah Rukh Khan, the star, they all were racing against time, trying to really squeeze in a lot. But then they must have realized that uh, there's no sense in now hurrying up with the release and, you know, uh, releasing either a not completed project or uh, not up to the mark project. They would have thought that when they've made such a lovely film, they've taken so long to shoot it and they've spent so much money. Why just compromise on the quality for those two or three months? So they're taking their sweet own sweet time so that the film turns out to be what they actually visualize it to be. And that is the only reason. There's no other reason why it has been postponed. It's just the shortage of time. So what is the ripple effect or the domino effect of this shift going to be now on other films? Uh, actually, first there were rumours that this film instead of 2nd June would come on uh, Bakarid, that is 29 mm -hmm. June. And therefore Maidan and Satya Prem Ki Katha and all of them were uh, touted to have been postponed. But the moment the announcement for 7 September came, all those films said we are not postponing, our films stand. So the domino effect of that is that the June releases haven't changed. But of course, the releases, the people, the producers who are planning to get their films around 7 September definitely won't come. At least one or two weeks before September, they won't dare to come. And 7 September, no chance. 14th and probably 21st September also, they'll think twice uh, before coming. So the September releases will definitely be affected. Now people are running for cover but then that always happens in the case of a big film and this is bigger than the big film because Patan was such a huge blockbuster it's the biggest uh, uh, Hindi blockbuster we have so people are um, the outsiders I mean the other producers are a little scared to really face off with uh, with uh, Jawan they'll wait and watch but September releases will definitely be affected so, so because of that, uh, there's now a Shah Rukh Khan sized void in the month of June. Will people be moving in there to take advantage of that? I think they will be moving in and obviously this has not come as a very good news for the exhibition sector because they were very, very hopeful about Jawan getting the numbers. But thank God, um, 
the Kerala story has come this week because they're getting to see huge numbers, which nobody in his wildest of dreams had expected. So, you know, as I told you, God give, if God takes away something, God gives something. So he's taken away Jaban in June, but he's given the Kerala story in May. It's really, really very, very exciting time for the, entity, uh, the exhibition sector. They are, I keep receiving uh, WhatsApp messages. Just now, I got a message from uh, a cinema in Ratlam. And he said, sir, the collections today are outstanding. So I said, yes. And, you know, I was just thinking, it's the same story everywhere. You would be surprised in a in a small town like Abu Road in Rajasthan, the police had to be called in to control the crowds on Saturday. I mean, where do you hear of such things? So, you know, I was just thinking when I was reading his message, I said, the only time when... Calling the police is exciting news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To control the crowd, right? So, so this phenomenon, this Kashmir Files phenomenon, this Kerala story phenomenon, their sort of extraordinary box office success. What does that mean for the films in the industry? I think it it's this success has not come a day too earlier because people, the exhibitors, exhibition sector was really reeling under losses. No film was faring well at the box office and several uh, big films like lost team within days of their release, you know. So people were just wondering up concept, which is why they were waiting for Jawan with such high hopes. And then a small film comes and sweeps everybody off their feet, sweeps the box office. That is the exciting part of the industry the most exciting part you can never say what a friday can do to the fortunes of the exhibition sector to the fortunes of the producer to the fortunes of the stars to the future of those stars you can never say who would have thought an ada sharma starrer would give so much of oxygen to the cinemas nobody absolutely and thank you so much for that extensive box office explainer always <laughs> enlightening talking to you sir thank, thank you, you.